surveys were a significant source of material in the literature. I mean, I, I think I, I mentioned the special issue earlier, but um, it, it just made up quite a significant amount of, of the literature. Uh, so it's well worth uh, running through it. We also did one of our uh, workshops with survey researchers, so it was great to get their perspective. Um, I think it, it's it's useful to the, the sort of two dynamics at play really with survey methods during COVID. Really, one, I, I mean, obviously longitudinal surveys. So we're talking about big, long-term, large-scale projects. Um, quite complex ongoing um, survey uh, workflows at different phases and, and waves as, they, as the term that they use, often running for a significant number of years um, and obviously massively disrupted by the constraints of COVID and, and, and lockdown. Um, and then, but then also on the other hand, there's also been this um, sort of this need, this demand for rapid, rapid survey data. And in many ways, survey researchers are well placed, you know, they do have these established sort of survey infrastructures in place, big sampling sets and all of that. But also, particularly if we think about the longitudinal sort of aspects of, of surveys, there's that potential for comparable data between sort of pre, post and during COVID. So, um, so a real demand on, on survey researchers to, um, to, to, as I say, maintain and continue with these, these big scale sort of longitudinal ones, but also to, to very much respond with the rapid stuff as well. Now, Connolly and, and Gay make the point that, about reliability and the issues around that, which I'll cover in a bit, but, um, but I, I wanted to include this quote because it, it sort of indicates the need to, to, to shift to remote methods, which I'll look at in a minute. Obviously, that was a big factor with survey, with the survey methods. But I think it, it also conjures this really important desire of researchers to commit to continuing their work and adapting their work, which, of course, we've seen evidence of already with our great presentations that we've had right across, you know, so, social researchers. Um, especially as social researchers, like many, you know, survey researchers, like many social researchers, generally focus on, you know, disadvantaged communities that we know have been most adversely affected by the effects of COVID and lockdown, etc. So, a real sense of wanting to continue, I think, with 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 these, I think, is really important. So there has been this shift very much to remote methods, to mode changes in survey research, obviously from the face-to-face -face site visits to, to telephone, use of SMS, video conferencing. Now, obviously they're using these in, in ways or the, you know, anyway, you know, they, they often use mixed methods and mixed modes anyway. So they're often experienced at using these methods, but obviously there's been a real reliance on shifting over to this type of thing that's created lots of issues around you know when particularly when sensitive research is involved obviously the digital divide with you know we've heard about and discussed plenty already this morning um a lot of the survey uh, re uh, methods research um from the gray literature from blog posts as well as the published literature actually um does come quite a lot from the global south and sort of lower middle income countries and it's interesting you know they have limited very limited internet access in in, in some cases compared to actually quite widespread ownership and use of mobile phones so you know that's been a really interesting uh, aspect of that but there's also been these protocol changes in terms of changes to interview protocols and things like that lots of redesigning and also in some cases retraining of of survey researchers um, and that's really to accommodate you know they've had to accommodate obviously changes in the mode um, so you know duration obviously having to do interviews through sms or on the phone can take longer you know it's a total change in pace how they've had to adapt when they've 
perhaps use supplementary tools like sliders, which survey researchers use quite a bit as well. So they've obviously had to accommodate to those in terms of remotely. But also really importantly, sort of shifts in the research phenomena or the sort of the focus of, of research. And obviously, you know, that is borne out with the effect of COVID on participants and, and, and sites, you know, in, in terms of their research, but also in how participants respond to COVID. I think Poppy sort of mentioned this earlier, you know, really well about, you know, a lot of people have got a lot more, you know, to deal with than, uh, you know, than, than engaging with research. And I think somebody on one of our workshops said, you know, with their participants, you know, they might be the first person that that participant has spoken to for several months, you know, I mean, so it's that emotional response as well from, from you know, from participants, it's, it's really important. So there's real shifts in the research phenomena and the foci and the sort of the, the topic of research, I think is really important. So this does raise issues of validity and reliability and a number of, of the authors have, have really picked up on this important need to distinguish and sort of um, untangle the effects of the change of mode, but also the changes to the research phenomenon. And often both of those are at play in quite interrelated terms. And particularly when it comes to analyzing this, you know, the, 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 the data, how do they go about distinguishing between those changes, you know, and those effects in terms of their validity and aspects of that. So that's one of the real key issues that's come out from the survey literature in particular, I think that's really interesting. So how have they gone about it in terms of mitigating those effects? Well, we've obviously there's the bespoke sort of rapid surveys. There's also being this sense of sometimes having supplementary surveys, which piggybacks, if you like, on existing longitudinal surveys, sometimes using subsamples. Um, we've even had, you know, examples of where they're doing interviews and they say to the participants, well, sort of you have to forget about sort of COVID because let's focus on our research topic. We'll do COVID at the end of our interviews, which I think is highly sort of problematic for for the researchers and particularly for the participants, but there have been, you know, where they've had to try and do that, where they've separated at, out at, at interviews. So that's been an interesting, so, sort of some of those approaches have been really interesting. And I just want to finish really on, on sort of coming out of the pandemic. And, you know, we're obviously in this sort of long tail of the pandemic in many ways, you know, that it was obviously very, abrupt the changes and the disruption to our, all of our research but coming out of it is a bit more of a long tail you know and, and, and you know there are going to be ongoing challenges you know fluctuations in I think one of our participants in our workshop mentioned about fluctuations in restrictions and regional variations as well you know and in terms of lockdown restrictions and stuff like that re-establishing contact and trust with participants was a big thing that came, again came out in the workshop so um, again these aren't necessarily exclusive to survey researchers but uh, to, to, I think to, to many of us but um, you know really some really good points there and some of the sort of implications for the future in terms of survey research you know some of the cost savings with the switch to sort of telephone online modes, there's, there's, there's been that initial uh, cost, but they are seeing over time cost savings. Could that mean that we will be seeing more of that potentially in the future? And I think particularly related to the Global South sort of research as well, there has been that increased recognition of local researchers of the role they have in maintaining contact with participants and developing that, that you know those those types of um, you know contacts and you know you start you know gaining that and maintaining that trust with participants and playing that really important role. So um, so there 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 are a few of the sort of things moving forward. Um, so yeah, references are on there that that, that I've uh, that I've done. So that's uh, that's me. Hopefully that was useful. <laughs>